I hope he does it, because I mean, it would be great for him. He uh -huh. usually does things like this. He's mad. Here, the early aviators are remembered in stone. The Smith brothers and their engineers, Wally Shears and Jim Bennett. Naturally enough, Brian was most interested in the pilot, Ross Smith, one of the most decorated of Australian airmen, and in the First World War, personal pilot to Lawrence of Arabia. Monument to a particular type of aviation in a particular time it was an astonishing, brilliant flight. And the fact is, it was years and years before anyone ever made the distance again in that same time. I don't know that people saw the flight of the Dargetti Flyer as an aviation achievement. Uh, many people saw it as amusing and entertaining, perhaps a stunt. I saw it as a recreation of the sort of thing that Ross and Keith Smith did. But I applaud the determination and courage you have demonstrated in your flight, reviving as it does the spirit of our early avi aviation pioneers. Welcome to Australia in our bicentennial year. It's signed Bob Hawke, Prime Minister. Thank you very much. The whole flight was pointless if I wasn't in Australia for its birthday. And then when I got to Australia, then I wanted to get to Sydney because that's where it all began. So I just wanted to go on and I was virtually stopped at Darwin. I'm disappointed, obviously, that I wasn't able to get anywhere near Ross and Keith Smith. And I think it's because I was held up so much in Europe. But in fact, racing Ross Smith since Karachi, I've been running neck and neck with him all the way across India and Bangladesh, Burma, down through Thailand and here into Malaysia. So it, it would have been a fair competition if I'd had fair winds. How dangerous has it been? Because Michael Wright's fly so slow, I think that people have overemphasized the, their dangers. I mean, everyone's been saying, I've crashed here and I've crashed there. I haven't crashed at all. I've landed the aircraft, even landed the aircraft in the sea. And uh, it, uh, while there have been dangers and while I have been frightening, I've been frightened. Uh, I think other aviators at, at the same sort of stage that I'm at, people like Amy Johnson and Bert Hinkler and Charles Kingsford Smith, people like that, all the early avi avi aviators, they must have gone through fear as well. And I think it's just part of what the whole flight's about, coping with it. You feel good afterwards when you've done it. The last leg was a hop and a skip down through the Indonesian islands, down to Kupang on the island. Yes, and, and the plane's in the Gulf. But don't worry, we're going to rescue her. So I'm feeling really dumb and I say, um, you came down in shallow water then? No, 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 it's very deep where I came down. But, but how come the plane is going to be rescued? Well, she's floating, isn't she? This was another one for the scrap album. Brown had gone into the drink 35 miles out in the Gulf. The engine had cut out because of a fuel blockage. They took us out in a helicopter and virtually threw us out and disappeared in the distance while we were left swimming for the aeroplane. But there was a ship nearby, so it wasn't that frightening. And we took the wings off. And I chucked a dirty great hole in the wind, which made Brian Tip pull his hair out again, put a lifting strap in, and lifted the plane aboard. It was mainly drying out, washing it, cleaning it, and putting all the bits back together. Like some hooligan out of the desert, okay, <laughs> still in my flying clothes, all dirty and scrubbed, standing next to a king with his arm around my shoulders, taking photographs. Very moving that was. I was, I was so touched by the fact that he did that. On from Amman, the Saudi desert would also throw up more problems with fuel and with sandstorms. Brian spent the night with Bedouins after a forced landing. The wind, rather than terror, that made Brian's hair stand on end. The microlight was blown over on landing. 
He wasn't hurt, but the plane was damaged. Brown stood there as if he had slain a dragon. The aircraft was stripped down, fuselage, wings and nose. A Greek taverna served as a temporary hangar. This was a job for Mike Atkinson. Well, when I arrived, the plane was all in bits. And I sort of looked at it and thought, well, I, it's a wreck. And then I thought, the only way to s is go through it and see which bits I could repair. And I just... Adventure. It's a, it's a wheeze. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life, you know, just living normally and end up with a pension and the rest of it. Or am I going to go and do what I'd always really wanted to do? And uh, it was such a great idea, I just decided I must go for it. My wife said our stories were getting whiskery and old and we needed some new ones too. Well, I don't think he's mad. I think he's courageous. Um, people... Britain, British people used to do things like that. We used to go off all over the world doing what I suppose is a mad thing, but we seem to have lost that thing, and, and Brian is putting some of that attitude back into, into what we're doing, so I'm, I'm really proud of him. But I hope he does it, because, I mean, it'll be great for him. He usually does things like this. He's mad. So, Milton and the Dalgetty Flyer were off. Like the Smith brothers in 1919, Brown took a camera with him. And as it was, dream up madcap schemes and sensibly don't do anything about them. This is a film about an exception of how a middle-aged Englishman and his particular dream took wing. With a little help from two friends, Brown Milton raced this microlight plane halfway around the world from England to Australia. His flight was as much misadventure as adventure, but he got there in the end, and in a record time for a microlight. Here was an emotional man pitting himself against the elements, a man who wanted to be somebody. I would like to have lived in a more heroic age, in an age when, instead of people calling it mad to do these things, they said, that was pretty good. I was, I was doing what I think people should do every hour and again, is to step out of the rut of life and the compromises of life and go and do something worth doing before you get too old. After its epic flight, the aircraft, the Dalgetty Flyer, certainly has a pensionable look about it and in the wind, an arthritic sound about it. The has decided to offer £10,000 for the first successful flight from London to Australia, in a machine manned by Australians. Brian would try to emulate the winners of the Great Air Race of 1919. The competitors are required to supply their own machines and make their own necessary arrangements. The race was won by Vickers Beamy Bomber, piloted and navigated by two Australian brothers, Ross and Keith Smith. Taking off from Hounslow in England, they reached Australia in under 30 days. Brian Milton did determined to do the same. His plane was similar in range and performance to a Vickers Vimy, and he would try to reach Australia in time for the country's bicentennial celebrations. What really grabbed my attention was the fact that Kerry Packer winds his, his way into the narrative. Kerry Packer had, uh, in 1987, sold um, Channel 9 uh, to, you know, the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of... of uh, Alan Gullible Bond, um, and Kerry Packer's in London. They meet up. Kerry Packer um, is also a pilot. I never knew this, and I've read dozens. Yeah, of I would before. never have known that, Peter. Yeah, it flies ultralights. Anyway, so they strike up a, a you know good relationship. They bond over a meal, and if. Uh, not necessarily, he was obviously a very astute financial person, and it only took a few weeks of financial dealings between before the purse strings were so tight that Brian Milton felt that it wasn't going to be a viable option from his mm -hmm. perspective, um, nor a financially remunerative one, um, being that he was a journalist, a very successful journalist, very successful TV host himself, which is obviously also goes to the rapport between the two of them, and mm. it, it fell over. Um, and, but I will read this quote out of it. Uh, Kerry Packer listened to the idea. We spent an hour telling each other, there I was, upside down, nothing on the clock, 
still going up stories in the middle of one of these Linton, being the PA of, of Kerry, uh, lent over, told me I'd got the sponsorship and go off and prepare a new budget. Mm. Um, but as I said, it, it lasted six weeks. After that, and the figures are flying around, looping the loop and defying the crowd. Death of rightfully keen, though magnificent men in their flying machines. Vagrant fire fly down with their feet in 